Hey, what's up you guys? Nick here. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Nick. I am a professional photographer. I've been shooting professionally for three years now, as of January, but I've been behind the camera for about 15 or 16 years or ever since high school. And for those of you who are returning, thank you guys so much again for checking out a new vid. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification, you guys, and if you like the video and the content I'm producing, please share. So while you guys are watching this, I'm actually in Dillon, Colorado at the Ice Castles, and I'm doing the video for next week, which is going to be on long exposure shooting and shooting at night. So this is the perfect way to wrap into that, and that is shooting manual mode. So we're gonna take the last three videos, which I will link a playlist up here where we discussed ISO, f-stop, and shutter speed, and how to use them practically to create the story that you wanna create, and we're gonna combine them all today, and we're gonna discuss shooting in manual mode. Now, shooting in manual mode is important because if you're in automatic mode, the camera is gonna to adjust generally to your ISO to get the best photo that the camera determines is the best. So because of that, you might not get the bokeh effect you want, you might not get blurriness, if that's what you're looking for, or a really sharp image, you're gonna get the best exposed image. So shooting in manual mode gives you complete control over the camera and your exposure, and the ability to create the images that you want. I'm going to start with the sunny 16 rule. Uh, the sunny 16 rule is that on a sunny day, at 100 ISO, 1 100th of a second shutter speed, and at f16 you'll have a perfectly exposed image. If you're out on a sunny day in automatic mode, that's most likely what your camera is gonna set to automatically. So let's say you want to get artistic about it and you wanna capture something in motion without the blur. So as we discussed in the shutter speed video, you need to increase your shutter speed in order to capture something that's moving without it having a blur. Now let's say you move that one one hundredth of a second to one two hundredth of a second. So we're gonna stop down one. Essentially what you've done is because you've sped up your shutter, you've cut the amount of light in half. So in order to compensate for that, we need to either adjust ISO or f-stop. So let's say we're happy at f-16. f-16 is a good aperture. We want everything to be really clear. We're shooting outside. f-16 gives you a large depth of field, as we discussed in the f-stop video. So we need to adjust our ISO. So we'll actually step up from 100 ISO to 200 ISO because that doubles the sensitivity of your sensor and it doubles the amount of light. Since we halved the amount of light by adjusting the shutter to from 1 100th of a second to 1 200th of a second, we have to make an adjustment on the other end. Now let's say you like where your ISO is at. You want it at 100 ISO, you're doing a lot of quick shooting, but you don't really mind losing a little bit of your depth of field, then you can move your f-stop to f11, and that also doubles the amount of light. So if you move from 1 100th of a second to 1 200th of a second, you can adjust your f-stop to a lower number, a wider aperture, or you can bring your ISO up and increase the sensitivity. So that's the basic of the Sunny 16 rule, and it kind of gives you an idea. Any of those three elements, when you adjust one of them to create the artistic image that you want to create, you have to adjust the other ones to compensate. Now, the great thing about modern DSLRs is they all have a light meter, and I'm actually gonna show you the light meter, and we're gonna go through different adjustments, and you can see it moving around and get more of a practical idea of how this works. So right here, we have my Nikon D5100. So that right there is your exposure meter, and we're close to the middle on it, but not exactly. And that's at 1 25th of a second at f22, ISO is 2500. So let's say we want a faster shutter speed. So we're gonna move that to 1 100th of a second. But as you can see, we are super underexposed, which means we actually need to bring it down to f11 at 1 100th of a second, and we are perfectly exposed with that photo. Perfectly exposed. It's not a very good shot, but it is perfectly exposed. So let's say we adjust our ISO down to 200. So at 200 ISO, we are very, very, very underexposed. We can bring the shutter speed down to 1 13th of a second, or we can bring the f-stop down to f4. Now that meter is also mirrored on the inside in your viewfinder when you're looking down there. So you don't always have to look at the screen for a proper exposure. So as you can see, every single adjustment we make, you need to counter it with another adjustment in order to bring your image into proper exposure. 
So that's the great thing about modern DSLR cameras is they have that little light meter. And as I was showing you, every single adjustment you make, you need to make another adjustment to counter it. So if you adjust your ISO, you need to adjust either your shutter speed or your f-stop in order to compensate for that. And as I was showing in the last three videos that we went over the different artistic choices you can make with those three elements, now you have a good idea of what those three elements will do for your photography and now how to compensate for those when you change one in order to get a certain look that you want or create a certain mood or get a certain photo. So like I was saying, I'm in Dillon, Colorado right now as you're watching this. I mean, we're in my basement right now, but I'm in Dillon, Colorado as you're watching this. Filming a video on long exposure night photography. I think you guys will really enjoy it. So if you like this video, check out my other videos. I have quite a bit of content on here now and I upload once a week. Sometimes you get bonus videos, sometimes I upload twice a week. So please, again, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification. If you guys like my videos, please share them. Give me some feedback down in the comments. What kind of videos do you guys want to see? Was this series helpful to you? Thank you guys again so much for going on this journey with me. You guys have a wonderful night.